Hello and welcome to another presentation by Growth Mindset Company. Today, we have a compelling topic, Employers Taking Over as Perfidic Yellow Book 2017. This presentation promises to be insightful for professionals in the construction, engineering, and legal sectors, as well as for those involved in contract management and administration. It is imperative for those involved in contract management to understand the various stages, implications, and requirements of this process to ensure compliance and successful project delivery. This slide also credits the expertise behind this presentation. It is prepared by Saurabh Nandeo, co-founder and a contract and procurement expert at Growth Mindset Company, and presented by myself, Sravan Kumar, an MEP and contract expert. Our combined experience in the field ensures a thorough exploration of the topic at hand. In this series, we aim to explore the intricacies of the FIDIC Yellow Book's provisions for taking over the works, including the rights and obligations of the employer and the contractor, the criteria for taking over, and the consequences of such actions. Stay tuned as we unpack these elements in detail throughout our presentation. When we talk about the taking over certificate under the FIDIC Yellow Book, we are essentially referring to a pivotal moment in the life cycle of a construction contract. This certificate signifies that the employer is now taking over the responsibility and control of the completed works from the contractor. It's a formal acknowledgement that the work, as contracted, has been completed to a satisfactory level, allowing the employer to begin operation or use of the facility. Here are the nuanced details. Tests on completion. These are not just tick box exercises, but are a series of rigorously designed tests that reflect the requirements laid out in the contract. They serve to demonstrate that the completed works are in accordance with the contract's technical specifications and design. This condition assures the employer that the infrastructure is safe and ready for operational use. Engineers no objection notices. As built records, these documents are critical because they represent the reality of what has been built versus what was originally planned. Any changes, deviations, or adaptations made during construction are recorded here, providing a definitive reference for future maintenance or expansion. Provisional ONM manuals, the importance of these documents cannot be understated. They are essentially the how-to guides for the employer to safely and effectively run and maintain the newly constructed asset. The provisional status recognizes that some details may only be finalized once the asset is operational. Training. The inclusion of training as a condition underscores a handover that is not just physical but also knowledge-based. The contractor is required to ensure that the employer's staff are adequately trained to operate and maintain the new works. This is about transferring not only the asset but also the know-how. Taking over certificate. The issuance of the TOC is the formal, documented point at which risk and responsibility transfer from the contractor to the employer. It is also a crucial document for financial and administrative processes, as it can trigger final billings, release of retention monies, and start the defects notification period. Exclusions. FIDIC recognizes that absolute perfection is not always practical, nor is it necessary for the works to serve their intended purpose. Therefore, it allows for the issuance of the TOC even if minor works or defects are pending, provided they don't affect the intended use. This clause avoids unnecessary delays and disputes over trifles that can be addressed after takeover. The key takeaway from this slide is the understanding of the delicate balance between the need for compliance to contract terms and the practicality of project completion. It is a demonstration of FIDIC's pragmatic approach to contract management, which values the substantial fulfillment of contract obligations rather than getting bogged down by inconsequential details. This depth of analysis of the TOC criteria provides contract professionals with insights into how each clause can affect project delivery and what they must vigilantly manage to ensure smooth project closure and transition. This slide provides a detailed explanation on the procedural aspects for the contractor to apply for the Taking Over Certificate (TOC), as per the FIDIC Yellow Book 2017, 
emphasizing the contractual mechanisms in place to facilitate a smooth transition of the work from the contractor to the employer. Let's unpack the details outlined on the slide. Application Process The contractor's application for the TOC is not an arbitrary communication, it is a formal notice that must be given to the engineer at least 14 days before the anticipated completion date. This period allows the engineer to schedule any final inspections or tests that need to be conducted before issuing the TOC. It's a proactive measure that helps both parties prepare for the upcoming transition. Sectional Completion If the contract allows for sectional completion, which means that the project is divided into separate parts that can be completed and taken over independently, the contractor is permitted to apply for a TOC for each section individually, as per subclause 10.1. This enables a phased handover of the project, which can be particularly useful in large or complex projects. However, if sections are not defined within the contract, the contractor may apply for the TOC for any part of the permanent works, and the engineer may issue it at their discretion. This clause provides flexibility and recognizes that not all projects neatly fit into predefined sections. Taking over in parts There is an option for taking over parts of the works under subclause 10.2. If this route is chosen, the remaining works or section cannot be taken over until all conditions from subparagraphs A to E of subclause 10.1 have been met. This condition ensures that partial taking over does not overlook any of the essential completion requirements. The nuances here are crucial for ensuring clarity and preventing disputes. The provisions mentioned encourage both the contractor and the employer to maintain clear communication and documentation, and they ensure that the taking over process occurs in an orderly and contractually sound manner. Understanding these procedures is fundamental for contract and project managers, as it directly impacts project timelines, cash flow, and risk management. A well-managed taking-over process ensures that the project transitions from the construction phase to the operational phase without hiccups, which is ultimately beneficial for all stakeholders involved. This slide is particularly important as it outlines not only the right but also the procedure for the contractor to initiate the taking-over process. It underscores the contractor's active role and right to move the project into its final stages. On this slide, we delve into the decision-making process of the engineer following the contractor's application for the Taking Over Certificate (TOC) under the FIDIC Yellow Book 2017. The slide outlines two fundamental paths the engineer can take, approval or rejection of the TOC application. Let's explore the intricacies of each decision. Approval Pathway Upon approval, the engineer issues the TOC to the contractor marking the official date of completion for either the entire works or a specified section, subject to the terms of the contract. The issuance of the TOC acknowledges that all contractual obligations have been met, with an important caveat. The engineer has the discretion to overlook any minor outstanding work or defects that do not substantially affect the safety or intended use of the works or section. This is significant as it allows for the works to be operational and handed over while acknowledging that minor snags can be addressed post-handover. It's a pragmatic approach that recognizes the dynamic nature of construction projects where, often, perfect completion without any minor issues is nearly impossible. The mention of these minor issues within the TOC serves as a formal record, ensuring they are not forgotten and are addressed in due course. Rejection Pathway Should the engineer choose to reject the application, the reasons for this decision must be clearly communicated to the contractor, along with the details of the additional work required for the TOC to be issued. This action initiates a corrective loop in which the contractor is expected to address the specified issues. Once the necessary work is done, and defects are remedied, the contractor may submit a new notice for the TOC. This process ensures that there is a clear understanding of expectations and deficiencies that need to be addressed, which is vital for maintaining the project's quality and safety standards. 
The balance between the approval and rejection pathways emphasizes the role of the engineer as a gatekeeper for quality and compliance while also demonstrating a degree of flexibility and practicality. Understanding the engineer's decision process on the issuance of the TOC is critical for project stakeholders. For contract and project managers, this process highlights the importance of preemptive quality control and proactive communication to avoid delays in receiving the TOC. For the contractor, it emphasizes the need to thoroughly complete the works to the agreed standards and to anticipate and rectify any issues before applying for the TOC. This slide is a core component of the presentation as it encapsulates the potential outcomes of a TOC application and provides clarity on the actions following the engineer's decision, underscoring the importance of this step in the contract closeout phase. This slide from the presentation focuses on the provisions under the FIDIC Yellow Book 2017 for what happens if the engineer does not respond to the contractor's application for the Taking Over Certificate TOC within the stipulated time frame. The slide is crucial as it outlines a fail-safe mechanism for the contractor, ensuring that project closure does not become unduly stalled due to administrative delays. Let's delve deeper into the meaning and implications of this provision. Automated Acceptance Clause The slide mentions an interesting automatic mechanism that comes into play if the engineer fails to act within 28 days of receiving the contractor's application for TOC. In such a scenario, if all the conditions from subparagraphs A to D of subclause 10.1 have been satisfied, the work with the section is deemed to have been completed in accordance with the contract. This deemed acceptance takes effect on the 14th day after the lapse of the 28-day window given to the engineer. This provision is a crucial part of the contract, serving multiple purposes. Promotes efficiency, it incentivizes the engineer to act promptly, ensuring that the project does not suffer unnecessary delays. Safeguards the contractor, it provides a safety net for the contractor, ensuring they are not left in a state of indefinite limbo awaiting the engineer's response. Mitigates administrative delays. It acknowledges that while administrative processes are essential, they should not hinder the practical progression of project completion and handover. Encourages proactivity. This clause is likely to encourage contractors to ensure they have met all necessary conditions thoroughly before applying for the TOC because the onus of due diligence, in this case, is implicitly shifted to them given the possibility of automatic acceptance. It's important for contract and project managers to be well-versed in these provisions. They must meticulously track all relevant deadlines and ensure that the contractor's application for TOC is comprehensive and leaves no room for ambiguity regarding the completion status of the works or sections. This clause is particularly significant because it introduces a sort of default judgment in the contractor's favor if the engineer fails to fulfill their contractual obligations in a timely manner. It's a testament to the balance FIDIC tries to maintain between the authority and responsibilities of different parties within the contract. In the broader scope of contract management, this slide's content underscores the critical nature of adherence to timelines and the potential consequences of delays. It reinforces the importance of understanding not only the roles and responsibilities outlined in a contract, but also the mechanisms in place to address non-compliance or inaction. This slide delves into the scenario where an employer uses the works before the official taking over certificate TOC, is issued, which can introduce a variety of contractual and liability issues under the FIDIC Yellow Book 2017. The provisions outlined here provide a framework for both the contractor and the employer in such situations. Let's dissect each component of the slide for a comprehensive understanding. Initial Condition the employer is generally prohibited from using the works before the issuance of a TOC, except as a temporary measure or as explicitly agreed upon. This prohibition is designed to maintain clear lines of responsibility and to ensure the works are completed and ready for operation as per contractual standards. If the employer uses the works, the slide breaks down the implications into four main points, A, B, C, D, that are triggered when the employer commences use of the works prior to the TOC. A. Deemed taking over, 
Any part of the works used by the employer is considered as having been taken over from the date of such use. This deemed taking over changes the status of the works legally and contractually. b. Transfer of liability, once the employer uses a part of the works, the contractor is no longer liable for the care of that specific part. The responsibility for its condition and any risks associated with its use transfer to the employer. c. Issuance of TOC, if the contractor requests, following the employer's use of the works, the engineer must issue a TOC for the part that has been used. This formalizes the change in liability and marks the part as completed within the contractual records. d. Cost and profit, should the contractor incur any costs due to the employer's use of the works without a TOC, the contractor is entitled to be compensated for such costs plus profit, as per the relevant claims subclause. This ensures the contractor is financially protected against any additional risks or expenses incurred from early use by the employer. The points on this slide emphasize a balanced risk allocation between the employer and the contractor. It acknowledges that while there may be circumstances where the employer needs to use the works prior to formal handover, such usage should not unfairly burden the contractor. Moreover, it ensures that any such early use is not left undocumented, protecting both parties' interests and providing a clear path for administrative and financial adjustments. The contractual mechanisms outlined here are a testament to FIDIC's detailed approach to addressing real-world complexities in construction projects, ensuring that fairness and clarity are maintained even in unorthodox scenarios. For project managers and contract administrators, understanding these provisions is crucial. It not only guides them in how to handle situations of early use, but also informs them of the financial and administrative remedies available should such a situation arise. This slide from the presentation addresses a specific situation where the employer or their representative causes delays or interferes with the taking over of the works, as outlined under the FIDIC Yellow Book 2017. The content outlines the potential recourse for the contractor in such a scenario and the procedural steps that follow. Here is an in-depth breakdown of the slide's content. Scenario of delay or interference by the employer. If the employer or their representative is the source of a delay beyond a stipulated period, 14 days in this case, that prevents the contractor from carrying out the test on completion, there are a series of steps and entitlements that come into play to address this issue. Notice, the first step involves the contractor providing notice to the engineer. This notice is critical as it officially records the event of the delay or interference and serves as the basis for any subsequent claims or adjustments to the contract terms. Entitlement The contractor, upon giving the notice, is entitled to certain remedies due to the delay. An extension of time for completing the works is warranted, allowing for a revision of the project schedule. The payment of the costs incurred due to the delay, plus profit, is also an entitlement to compensate the contractor for any financial losses or additional expenses as a result of the employer's actions. Determination The engineer has a duty to make a determination based on the notice and the contract's conditions. Specifically, Clause 3.7 of the FIDIC contract outlines the engineer's role in this situation, which includes a fair assessment of the situation and deciding on the contractor's entitlements as per the contract's terms. Deemed issuance of TOC. Importantly, if the delay crosses the threshold of 14 days as a result of the employer's actions, the slide indicates that the taking over certificate is deemed to be issued. This is a critical provision because it means that even without a formal TOC, the work is considered as taken over due to the employer's interference, effectively transferring the responsibility and potential liability for the works to the employer. This deemed issuance acts as a safeguard for the contractor, ensuring that they are not unduly penalized for delays outside their control. It also serves as a strong incentive for the employer to avoid causing any undue hindrance to the completion and taking over process. For contract and project managers, it's essential to be aware of these provisions, not only to manage risks effectively but also to ensure they are prepared to take the necessary steps if such a situation arises. The slide presents a clear procedural outline that balances the rights and responsibilities of the contracting parties, emphasizing the importance of fair play and the mitigation of risks associated with project delays. Slide 8 discusses Clause 17.2 from the FIDIC Yellow Book which pertains to the responsibility for the care of the works. Here's an in-depth explanation of this clause. The slide begins by highlighting the contractor's responsibility. 
From the commencement date to the issuance of the taking over certificate, the contractor is tasked with the full responsibility for the care of the works and goods associated with the contract. This includes safeguarding the construction against risks, damages, and any loss. Upon the issuance of the taking over certificate by the engineer, the care of the works shifts from the contractor to the employer. The employer then assumes responsibility for any part or section of the works that the taking over certificate covers. There are, however, stipulations to this transfer of responsibility. The contractor is no longer responsible for the care of the works once the TOC is issued, except for events termed as employer's risks. These typically include things beyond the contractor's control that are the employer's responsibility, such as design provided by the employer. If any loss or damage occurs after the TOC is issued and it's due to the contractor's actions that occurred before the TOC was issued and for which the contractor was liable, then the contractor remains responsible. This prevents the contractor from escaping liability for previous actions by simply reaching the taking over stage. This clause ensures that there is a clear demarcation of responsibility for the care of the works before and after the TOC is issued. It's essential for all parties to understand these provisions to manage their risks appropriately. The care of the works is a critical aspect of project management, affecting insurance requirements, risk management, and the allocation of costs related to potential damages. Contractors and employers must both be aware of when and how the risks transfer so they can act accordingly to mitigate potential issues. The slide underlines the contractual shift in liability and care, which is a pivotal point in the construction process. It implies a handover, not just of the physical works, but also of the stewardship and the associated risks. Understanding the nuances of Clause 17.2 is crucial for professionals involved in the administration of construction contracts under the FIDIC suite, as it defines key responsibilities and the transition of risk between the contractor and the employer. The care of the works, loss and damage, and defects are integral aspects of construction contracts, particularly under the FIDIC suite, which outlines clear guidelines and responsibilities for all parties involved. Care of the works the care of the works refers to the obligation of the contractor to protect the work from loss or damage until the point at which responsibility is transferred to the employer. This includes implementing safety measures, securing materials and equipment, and ensuring that the works are not subjected to any undue risk. Under FIDIC, the contractor's duty to care for the works extends from the commencement date to the issuance of the taking over certificate. During this period, the contractor is typically required to maintain insurance to cover these risks and is responsible for any rectification measures should loss or damage occur. Loss and damage Loss and damage in the context of construction can arise from various causes, including accidental damages, natural disasters, theft, vandalism, or negligence. The responsibility for these losses depends on whether they occur before or after the issuance of the taking over certificate. Before its issuance, the contractor is usually responsible for such losses, except for those resulting from employer's risks, which are expressly defined in the contract. After the TOC, the employer assumes risk for the works, although the contractor may still be liable for damages directly attributable to their prior actions or negligence. Defects Defects are flaws or imperfections in the completed works that arise due to non-compliance with the contract requirements, often due to inadequate workmanship or materials. Under FIDIC contracts, there is a defects notification period, which starts after the TOC is issued. During this period, the contractor is obligated to rectify any notified defects at their own cost. Failure to do so may lead to the employer having the works corrected by others and back charging the contractor for the associated costs. The handling of defects is crucial since it can affect the durability and safety of the construction and has significant financial implications. Contractors need to establish robust quality control processes throughout the project life cycle to minimize the occurrence of defects and thus limit their liability. In managing care, loss and damage, and defects, detailed records of the work's condition, regular inspections, and prompt notification of issues are vital practices. 
These practices ensure transparency and facilitate the fair allocation of costs associated with rectifying any issues. They are also essential for maintaining the relationship between the employer and contractor and for the successful completion and handover of the project. Understanding and managing the interplay between the care of the works, loss and damage, and defects is a complex yet critical part of contract management. It involves not only adherence to contractual terms but also proactive risk management and quality assurance throughout the construction process. Slide 9 covers Clause 14.9 from the Fittick Yellow Book, which is concerned with the release of retention money. Retention money is a portion of the contract price that is withheld by the employer as a safeguard against any non-compliance or defects in the works by the contractor. Here is an in-depth explanation. Understanding retention money. Retention money acts as a financial incentive for the contractor to ensure the completion of the works in accordance with the contract specifications and to rectify any defects that may arise during the defects notification period. It is a common practice in the construction industry to hold back a percentage of the contract value until the works are proven to be free of defects and fully compliant. Release of retention money. Upon issuance of the taking over certificate, TOC, for the works or a section of the works, the contractor is entitled to include the first half of the retention money in their next statement. This is an acknowledgement of the successful handover of the project or section from the contractor to the employer. If the contract is divided into sections, the contractor can claim the relevant percentage of the first half of the retention money for each section that has been taken over. Note on contract data, the percentage of retention money to be released is specified in the contract data. This percentage may vary from one section of the works to another, reflecting the differing values or risks associated with each section. If a section's percentage is not explicitly stated in the contract data, then no specific release of retention money for that section will be made under this clause. Implications The clause ensures that the contractor's cash flow is partially restored after the employer has taken over the works, balancing the financial risks between the contractor and employer. It also motivates the contractor to reach completion efficiently while still ensuring that a financial safeguard is in place until the end of the defects notification period. The partial release of retention money upon taking over is crucial because it helps the contractor to recover some of the capital invested in the project. This can be particularly important for the contractor's financial health, especially in long-term projects where cash flow can significantly impact operations and the ability to take on new work. For project managers and contractual parties, understanding the conditions under which retention money is released is critical. It influences the financial planning and management of the project and helps to establish clear milestones for financial transactions between the employer and contractor. Let's face it, the world of construction contracts can feel like a minefield sometimes. All those technical terms and legalese can really do a number on your blood pressure when you're trying to make sense of it all. But take a deep breath, because videos like this are here to be your lifeline. By breaking down those dense clauses into plain English, we're arming you with the insights to navigate contracts confidently. If you felt that weight lift after watching, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. That simple like is a vote saying, yes, I want more clarity on this stuff. But don't stop there, pay it forward by sharing this video with others in your network. We all know someone who has lost sleep pondering the finer points of indemnification or notification requirements. This is your chance to be their hero. And of course, for a steady supply of contract knowledge that declutters the jargon, subscribe to Growth Mindset Company right away. We're constantly tackling new topics and breaking them down into bite-sized, actionable tips. Ring that notification bell while you're at it. That way you'll be the first to know whenever we post something new to make your job easier. At the end of the day, understanding contracts shouldn't be a headache. With resources like these, you can cut through the complexities and get straight to the heart of what matters. No more stressing, no more guessing, just confidence. Like, share, subscribe, it's your direct path to becoming a construction contract superhero.